This edition of Mac Voices is supported by the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter to keep you up on all the latest from Mac Voices. Watch or listen to Mac Voices straight from your email client. Sign up at macvoices.com slash newsletter and stay up to date. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, we are slowly but surely wrapping up the road to MacStock, where we are talking to the presenters and some of the people that are going to be at MacStock 2017 in uh, Woodstock, Illinois, in July. And I can't think of anybody that I'd rather wrap it up with or come close to wrapping it up with. Uh, I think we've saved one of the best for one of the last, Mr. Dave Hamilton. Dave, welcome. It's good to see you. It's good to be back. It's been a while since I've been on the show with you. It's been too long since you've been on the show, but at least I got to see you in person at uh, at WWDC. So that that makes up for it. It do, it totally makes up for it. Well, yeah. except that they didn't get to see me at WWDC. That's true. That's true. So we're going to make up for that right now, and then yeah. and then we want to make up for it even more because then they can see you in person at Mac Stock if all they have to do is come. All you got to do is come. That's yep. it. Yep. That was a very sloppy introduction, but uh, yeah, this is just the way we do it. <laughs> So you're going to be talking about mesh networking. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and uh, that's that's kind of a broad topic, Dave, uh, for the amount of time that you're allotted. It it is right. So I've been thinking a lot about this because when I pitched it, uh, it was at a time when I was actually pitching a lot of uh, talks that I was giving this year at various user groups and and other things. And I generally tend to pick one topic per year, uh, especially for user groups, so that I can really go deep and I'm not just skimming the surface of one thing every few months as I go around. Um, and that's worked out. This this topic of mesh networks and really just how to choose a router in general has worked out really well for user group meetings, except that they tend to get to about the three-hour mark. I'll, I'll speak for about an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes, and then once the Q&A brings us around to hour number three, there's usually somebody in the back saying, hey, somebody else needs the room, so right. we got to go. <laughs> so 20 minutes, I think, is what I get at Mac Stock for, um, for this. And I want it to be compelling. I want it to be valuable to the people that attend. So uh, obviously, I can't talk the whole thing. Similarly, I don't just want to skim the surface. So I've been going through and thinking about all the different ways that and, and, and really segments of this topic that I could go through and, and really dig into for for 20 minutes. And and uh, and so that's what we'll be doing in, you know, six weeks in July. I, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing your approach to it. Um, Me too. Uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess so. Let's not do the session here, but sure. maybe we can lay some groundwork for you. Um, do I need a mesh network? Right. So, th and and that's that's one of the questions that I think we're probably going to have to skip. Um, it, it just because that question alone could take twenty minutes, right? Right. And 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 but the the simple way to answer it is: Does what you have right now work for you? Uh, because we geeks have uh, have warped the "if it ain't broke, don't fix it" phrase into "if it ain't broke, fix it till it is," <laughs> and uh, and that can really happen. Not that adding a mesh network or replacing what you have with a mesh network is going to break anything, but if it's not broken, <laughs> there's there's no reason yet to change anything. Because regardless of what you buy today, within five years. Or, or possibly quite a bit less than that, you would want to replace it anyway. Um, so, uh, so that's really the way I, I ask that question first: is do you do you feel that something you are missing something, and can you um, can you articulate that, or is it just fear of missing out? And if somebody can say, "Oh yeah, you know, my wireless speeds um, aren't good, or I'm having trouble getting connected in the bedroom." Those are the kinds of questions, if you answer yes to those, okay, then yeah, let's talk about a mesh network, um, especially if your house, as many are, is laid out such that your point of entry, either the cable modem or the DSL modem, whatever it is you get your internet signal from, if that's in some odd corner of the house, 
then that's probably not the best place from which to broadcast a wireless signal for the entire house. And that, that's exactly what you have to do with a single router. So uh, a mesh, for those of you that, that don't understand that term in this context, because it can mean different things, a mesh is multiple wireless access points working together to cover your house in Wi-Fi such that you and your devices don't need to think about, am I, you know, do, when I'm here, do I need to connect to the extender that's named Dave's network extender, or do I connect to the main router that's named Dave's network main? No, you just connect to Dave's network and either the devices or the mesh itself chooses which access point is best for you based on whatever circumstances are present. Okay, so you've just identified me perfectly because I, I don't want to miss out. I feel like I'm missing out. And and you've been on the show before. You're a router guy. You, you love routers. Don't quite do. know why, but you do. Um, yeah. You know, and, and well, and that's good because, you know, that means that you're going to dig deep into the guts and then share the information with the rest of us. I do feel like I'm miss, missing out a little bit on the whole mesh networking thing, but I don't, I can't articulate why. It, yeah. it, and, and I don't have connectivity problems in my home, so therefore... I haven't invested. I, I, I want. I almost. I want to invest. Dave, give me a reason to invest. <laughs> I, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, I really can't give you a good reason to invest. Uh, I can give you lots of fun reasons to invest, but but they're all for you going to be theoretical, right? Because uh, because everything works for you. So what you could do, it, an artificial test that's that's only somewhat artificial, but it really is artificial is to go around all corners of your house and stand there with your iPhone and do a speed test, right? Now, I don't know how fast your internet signal is either, your internet connection is. And if your internet connection, you know, if you're if you're somebody who's getting 100 megabits downstream or faster, then this is probably a valid test to go around and, and run speed tests from every corner of your house and decide where it's slower. But the reality is, even for streaming Netflix, if you're getting, you know, 20, 30, 40 megabits in, in one location, that's mul many times what Netflix is going to need. And that is your probably your biggest um, streaming need from the Internet is streaming, you know, full quality video. Uh, certainly when you download software updates, you want those to come in as fast as possible. And but how often are you downloading software updates where an extra couple of minutes shaved in either direction is really going to make a difference. Probably not so much, right? It's, it's the recurring things and really Netflix is the biggest one. Um, you, and, and I, I'm going to, I, I, I'm going to make an assumption here, but I, I'm, or an interpretation, but I'm pretty sure if you, if I remember correctly, you, you live alone, right? You're the only person that lives in that house, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. Um, where, it, where a mesh network can make a difference is if you have multiple devices, which generally implies multiple people, streaming something like Netflix simultaneously. The way your router works is it really only talks to one device of yours at a time, okay? Um, I know it seems like you have many devices connected to your router, and certainly if you look at them all, you'll see the wireless signal and it's all there. But when there's data being transmitted, all of your devices make it such that your router can only talk to one of them at a time. Now, it goes in a round-robin fashion very, very quickly, and it says, okay, you send me some data, or I'll send you some data. All right, hang on. Now you. All right, let's go. Okay, hang on. You. All right, and then back over here. Um, there is a technology that solves that called multi-user MIMO, and you might have seen it. Uh, advertised on some routers these days. And what, what that means is if a router has multiple antennas, multiple streams, then that router can talk to different devices simultaneously. Here's the rub. All of the devices, including the router, but also including all of the client devices that you have, need to support this MU MIMO. If just one of them doesn't, then the router sort of dumbs down to single user MIMO mode, which is what I described before. And here's the rub. There's not a single Apple device made that supports multi-user MIMO. Right. So okay. all you need is one iPhone associated with your router 
And it doesn't matter what router it is, it's not running multi-user MIMO anymore. So. So did you just give me a reason not to buy a mesh router? No, no, no. I'm about to give you a reason to buy a mesh router. So here's the thing. If you have multiple devices that are going to stream something like Netflix, it really can, even if you have good coverage everywhere, it really can make a difference if uh, your router is is single user and is trying to you know do its round robin thing, getting data to multiple devices that are streaming actively simultaneously. Because if if one of those is far away or both of them are far away, that can start to put a strain on things, and you you might see some some uh, bandwidth issues. And since your Apple devices can't do multi user MIMO, well. The only way to simultaneously stream to two of those devices would be to have more than one access point in your house. And what's one way to have more than one access point in your house? It's a mesh network. Because one device can associate with one of your access points, another device can associate with the other, and now they each kind of have their own uh, their own thing to, from which to stream. And yeah, they're going to share with your your phone that occasionally pops in to check for mail or whatever that is, but it's not this consistent battle. And, and that can really help. And I've seen homes where that makes a difference, especially with, you know, multiple people that are trying to stream all the time. Just for the record, I, even though I live alone, I probably have the equivalent of multiple people devices. So, you know, right. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. You so it may, yeah. Right. Um, Okay, so and, and again, we don't want to do the session here, but the the other thing I would ask you to touch on or give us a, a, a quick understanding, security of these things is am I because that's the other concern I think that I hear people when they start talking about upgrading their router, speed and coverage definitely, but also security. Yep. So um, the general security of a mesh network is no different than any other wireless network in that. If as long as you have things password protected, which would be the default if you were to just walk through their setup, then you would have WPA2 encryption on your mesh wireless network, just like you would on your Apple's Airport Extreme or your Netgear, you know, uh, Nighthawk router or whatever that is. Where things get a little bit different is most standalone routers, not all, but most, including Apple's are managed locally. And by that, I mean the only way that by default, out of the box, you can manipulate the settings on the router is to A, know the password, and B, connect to that router from within its network. So by default, that airport extreme behind you, I can't get into from my office here. Now, you could set it to be uh, configurable and manageable from remote. But by, by default, no, it, it's not. With the mesh offerings, many of them, not all, but, but I would say more than half of the field that's out there now is all what I would call cloud managed. So you're not actually ever talking directly to your mesh router in terms of changing its settings. You're talking to it in terms of connecting and, and getting on the internet. But for changing its settings, what you do is you actually connect to the router manufacturer's web service or cloud service. Usually it's done with an iOS app, but some of them you can do with the web. Uh, you make a settings change there, and then that settings change is pulled down by your mesh. Uh, and that can be a potential security hole. If somebody can log into your account at, say, Eero or Luma or, or you know, Linksys, then they could control your Eero, your Luma, or your Velop, and but, then potentially get in and do all kinds of things. But wouldn't that be the same as as some of the other non-mesh routers that are managed in the cloud? It, it's exactly the same as okay. a cloud man any other cloud managed router. That's correct. Okay, yeah. so, so it's 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 in line with the current standards of of, of routers. Correct. Okay. Correct. Yeah. It, it, and there are some mesh products that are not cloud managed, like Ubiquiti's Amplify and Netgear's Orbi are locally managed. Uh, you can set them to be cloud manageable or remote manageable, depending on the product. But by default, no, they're not. And and um, and that's you know, that's just one of the that's that's a choice you make when you buy a router. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
One one nice thing about mesh while we're talking about management is even though you might have two or three or even four or maybe even 10 devices that make up your mesh, you have one management interface for all of them. And that's very different from, say, having an airport extreme and then some extender that each have their own management interface. Mm -hmm. You need to configure differently. They're not they're not aware of each other. They're not talking with each other. So that's that's one of the benefits. Yeah. Okay, that that is really interesting. I, I and it makes perfect sense. Hadn't thought about it that way. Yeah, because I've I've done that, and you know, it's look, it's not that much of a hassle, but it's still a hassle. It, yeah, when things start going south, it's a hassle. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so you spend some time with this stuff. Oh, Chuck, I spend a <laughs> lot of time with this stuff. So, so right now, Dave, how many mesh networks are in in the room that you're in right now? That are in the room that I'm in right th now, they're blanketing the room that you're in right now. Three, only three. <laughs> yeah, one is dedicated solely to this room oh, at, at the moment. Okay. Yeah, because this is my office. My office is about seventy-five feet away from my house, uh, so I will test things here. Right now, Google Wi-Fi is set up as as the, all three of their access points are in this room, which is obviously totally overkill, even from what you can see in the camera. But it's a way of testing it and just making sure that things work and all of that. And then I actually test it across the driveway to see if the mesh can wirelessly reach across the driveway. Uh, and then I also, of course, have Ethernet underground between the two. And that's a good test of Ethernet backhaul, which not every mesh supports. They all should, in my opinion, but uh, many of them, some of them don't. So is that something to look for, um, Ethernet backhaul versus wireless backhaul? Yeah, they're all of the mesh products that are targeted at consumers will do wireless backhaul. That's that's sort of their their claim to fame, if you will. But Ethernet backhaul means that uh, by backhaul, I mean the communication that happens between the mesh access points to get data between, you know, from one to the other. And then front hall would be talking to your iPhone and your Mac and your iPad. Um, Ethernet backhaul means that that backhaul happens over a wire. And that means you're not using up some of your wireless bandwidth for this communication between the devices. So if you have Ethernet in your walls, or you can even approximate having Ethernet in your walls, that can work really well uh, to have Ethernet backhaul. And and then and then the mesh is truly free to to, to kind of do some magic stuff. So. Okay. I I, re I know I'm going to ask it. I already know part of the answer. But if I have Ethernet in my walls and I can run Ethernet to multiple rooms, do I need to spend the money on, on a mesh network? Is it just strictly a matter of convenience for wireless yeah, devices? That's right. It's convenience at that point. Okay. You know, you can build what I would call a quasi mesh. Uh, if you've got Ethernet in your walls, you would have, you know, your router wherever you need to have it because that's where your cable modem or point of entry is. And then Ethernet from that to another room where you hang um, a router that you put in bridge mode or access point mode. And that will then be your, you know, a, 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 again, it's a, it's a, it's not a mesh point because the two aren't configured as part of the same interface. They're not necessarily going to do any handing off between them. Although some mesh products don't do handing off and, and that works fine. So yeah, you can build a quasi mesh uh, is what I call that. And I've, that, that's what I've had at my house for the last 10 years is, is that kind of a quasi mesh and mm -hmm. it works really well. It just means you're managing each device individually. Got it. So. so I don't want you to answer this question. I, I want a yes or no. I don't want the answer that you might give. Um, are you going to be making a specific recommendation at the end of this session or a, a range of recommendations? Or is it just going to be more this is what mesh networking is and this is why you might want to do it? I'm going to give you more than a yes, but I'm not going to go over the line you don't want me to cross. Yeah, because then so. there's no reason to sit through your session. So, <laughs> Well, so here's the thing. I could tell you today what my recommendation is. And yes, I will give uh, at least one recommendation, possibly multiple recommendations at the end of my session. Okay. This stuff changes so quickly that six weeks ago, I would have given you a different range of recommendations than I would give you today. And based on some information that I that's been shared with me that's not quite yet public, I can foresee where the recommendation I would give you today possibly changing in the next six weeks. 
Wow. So that really makes choosing some, I mean, it, we're all looking for the right answer, yeah. right? You know, that, that one, okay, there's one that's, that, that these characteristics make it the best choice. And in a lot of cases, there just isn't a best choice because it has to be tailored to your personal situation. Right. There is no one best choice. Hopefully there is a best choice for you, but given how quickly this whole market is and this this whole paradigm is evolving, um, there might not even be the best choice for you. So you just kind of have to pick and go. Yeah. yeah. Well, I and mean, it's like when you buy a computer, right? You, you, you look, you decide, OK, today this is the right model for me at the right price. I'm happy with it all. Great. Buy and then don't look at prices for six months. Yeah. Because you drive yourself crazy. Well, you drive yourself crazy. And to your point, you know, if you have the need for this, I mean, I'm sitting here, of course, we're, we're joking a, a little bit that, you know, I, I want to be involved. I want, I want to invest. I want to do this. But I really don't have the, the need because I don't have the problems that Mesh solves. Right. So, you know, that's, that, that's one reason I've been sitting out. We'll see and how I, long I can sit out. Yeah. And that um, it, it's not, you know, Mesh can make a huge difference. And it really like everybody that I that I know that's gone to it and, and I have some local friends and family. I can't test every mesh here long term. I can only test one thing at a time. So I wind up, you know, finding local family and friends to say, OK, look, I'm done with my initial test. I'm going to upgrade your house. And uh, and then, well, then I get to see how it performs long term. Yeah. And, and then you get to tell me how it performs. And sometimes that second part's even more valuable because it's not a geek, you know, obsessing over it. It's just somebody using it. Right. right? And everybody that I know that has moved to mesh listeners, family, friends, readers all say this is like true bliss because I don't have to think about it anymore. I just everywhere in my house is covered. Uh, the software updates happen automatically. Uh, I don't really think about it. It just it just always works always works. Right. So there is that. And that's, that is the reason to get a mesh network is if you want that always works because you're going to pay a price premium for this stuff. It's not cheap. You know, you're not going to get into a mesh for 120 bucks or something. It's, it's going to be 300, maybe 400, depending on, you know, what you're looking at. You could spend five. Um, it's a, it's an investment and you want to get a return on that. And, and so, yes, this can do that for you. Um, but if you, if you already have that, it just works. My advice might be to wait six months and see what happens. Well, yeah, yeah unless you have a problem to solve. And then if you uh, have the problem to solve. And then just solve it. Don't yeah. wait. Yeah. 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 I'm looking forward to this, um, because this, you know, obviously we, we answered a couple questions here, but especially if it's changing that fast, um, I'm going to be anxious to see what it is in six months and, Hopefully you'll have enough time to tell us why, but, what changed in the last six months that would change your opinion. And maybe that's the right way to focus my session is not on telling you what you need to know today, but teaching people how to make sure they know what they need to know on whatever day it is that they decide to buy. Yeah, I would, I would agree with that. I mean, just the discussion about backhaul, that's a, sm yeah. that's a small thing. The right. discussion about cloud management, a small thing, but those are all in the checklist of things. Okay, if I'm going to go buy a modem, excuse me, if I'm going to go buy a, a mesh network, tick, 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 which one, yep. what does it have? And does that mean something to me or not? And does it, yeah, does this matter to me? Right, right. right. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, I, I'm looking forward to seeing you along with a lot of our, our other friends that we know and a lot of friends we don't know yet. Because there be that always happens when we go to Max Talk. You meet people that then you stay in touch with the rest of the year, waiting for the next Max Talk to come up. I I have only made it to one. I made it to the first Max Talk last year. It interfered or it conflicted with a family vacation, and uh, and I missed. I, I truly missed being there or not being there. So I will. Uh, I, I am very eager to get back. Yeah. Good. Well, they, Mike does such a great job and. Uh, what we all know, I guess, from from the Mac Observer, Jeff and Brian are both coming. They're both speaking. Yep. So, gee, this is going to be almost a TMO kind of show. I know. I know. <laughs> hey, I didn't pick the speakers. I just, you know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. how it goes. You just yeah. have you just have good people. That's it. Yeah. 
So when you're not talking mesh networks uh, at here on Mac Voices or on Mac Stock, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me. I do a podcast called Mac Geek Gab, where we talk about this kind of thing and really answer all of your questions. So we'd love to have you as a listener. Uh, and and that's a lot of fun. And, and that's at MacGeekGab.com. And you can find me on Twitter at Dave Hamilton. Great. Dave, it's a pleasure. It was good to see you in California. Soon I'll see you in Illinois. Sounds like a plan. Looking forward to it. All right. Take care. See ya. Folks, join Dave. Join me at MacStock 2017 in, in uh, Woodstock, Illinois. MacStock2017.com is where you want to go to get your tickets, to get your hotel, and to get to Woodstock. We will have a great time. Until the next time, thanks for watching. Visit MacVoices.com for show notes, links to subscribe, and to connect with Chuck on Twitter, Google+, Facebook, YouTube, Vimeo, SoundCloud, the Mac Voices blog, the Mac Voices Dispatch, our weekly newsletter, and on Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard that helps you do more with your Apple tech. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at BackbeatMedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at Cashfly.com. <laughs>